What is up, JDs and Lenderman? It is your boy Stax. Back at it with another video. Today we got Sabaton the Red Baron animated story video. Real quick, I just want to say thank you guys for all the support. And if you guys want more Sabaton reactions, let me know which songs you guys want me to listen to. And I got you guys. I'll try to get to you guys, but let's get right into this. It's January 1917, and in an airfield, a young pilot is directing men to paint his albatross fighter. Other pilots look on in awe. This young pilot with 16 victories to his name is the new commander Damn. of Yasta 11. It contains many elite and legendary pilots, but none can compare to this young man stood bolt upright. He knows he is better than anyone else out there. The work is done. The plane stands in all its scarlet Teutonic glory. The pilot is Manfred von Richthofen, and on this day, the day he chose to paint his plane bright red, it is the birth of a new name, a legendary name that will never die, the Red Baron. Success after success came to Yaster 11 under the Red Baron's tutelage. Richthofen had been a student of a genius aviation tactician named Oswald Bolka. Bolka's dictates were the essential rules for successful air combat. Richthofen embraced them, taught them, and enhanced them. That shit is sketchy. How can I be like you? Start the plane like that. Aim for the man, and don't miss him. He urged his men to fight on and fly on to the last drop of blood and the last drop of fuel to the last beat of the heart. Richthofen and his Yaster 11 would become the nemesis of the Royal Flying Corps. The Yaster 11 in the heavens would seem like gods or demons to those on the ground. Stuck in the mud and the trenches, seeing the red whirling beast spitting fire overhead, the Germans whispered his name or Der Rote Kampflieger. The Allies whispered it in equal fear and awe, the Red Baron. But there was one thing that all sides agreed upon. He was the king of the sky. Um, oh shit. Here we go, boys. Ladies and gentlemen, here we go. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. That came in hard as hell. Holy shit, that was fucking sick. Fast paced as hell. It is fucking fire, holy shit! Wait, did he say eye for an eye? Was isn't that the uh the quote from the um what's that shit? I forgot his name, the king. One of the kings back in I don't know. You guys if you guys know what I'm talking about, leave a comment down below if because I can't really think right now, I'm sorry. I just never fucking die. British loses 245 aircraft. Holy shit, 22 victories in one day. That takes some balls. Pause. 
guitar solo. I like it. Higher. Gotta go to space. That shit is so fucking sketchy, man. He caught that shit midair? That's crazy. His injuries caused him repeated issues with headaches and nausea. He also suffered a change in mood and temperament. Which... That's kind of to be expected because high altitude can really fuck with you like that too. So I can really, I see where they're coming from. ...became darker. The thrill of combat lessened. He wrote, I am in wretched spirits after every aerial combat. I believe that the war is not as the people at home might imagine it, with a hurrah and a roar. It's very serious, very grim. Very brutal too. On April the 21st, 1918, the Red Baron got into his famous Fokker triplane and took off into the morning sky. It was the flight that would bring his life to an end. He spotted a sop with camel and gave chase. This time it seems he may not have realized he was behind enemy lines while chasing the sop with at a very low altitude. At the time, due to wind conditions and the moving of the front lines, he uncharacteristically continued the chase too far. That takes some serious fucking balls. Holy shit. Oh, he got hit. In the last moments of his life, he managed to make a rough landing in a field north of the village of vaux sur -Sain. Several Australian servicemen rushed up to the downed triplane to hear the Red Baron's last words. Kaput. The king of the sky was dead, but his legend would never die. Leave a legacy. The Red Baron was treated with great respect and was interred with full As he military should. honors by the personnel of Number 3 Squadron, Australian Flying Corps. Allied squadrons stationed nearby came to pay their respects. Memorial wreaths were laid, one of which was inscribed with the words, To our gallant and worthy foe. I like the ending of the story, how he flies off, flies off into the into the um the sky. But as I said, guys, fucking if you are gonna fucking join the army or anything like that, fucking die for your country, live for, live in honor, leave a legacy behind. Even if you're not joining the army, just try to leave a legacy behind. Leave, let your fucking name live forever. But um, that was a really good um song. That was really actually, I I like that one. It really just came out of nowhere, just fucking like I was like, what the fuck. That was really fucking like speedy and fucking like very fucking hard very just, That shit was fire But if you guys like this video leave a like on the video and also thank you guys so much for 90 subscribers You guys are fucking lit. I love you guys so fucking much but um if you guys want me to write some more Sabaton, let me know which songs and Subscribe to let me to know when actually Sorry about that. Let me fix. Subscribe with the bell notification to know when I upload a new video. And if you guys enjoyed, again, leave a like. And thank you guys so much for 90 subscribers. And peace out. It's been your boy Stacks.